On this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's trying out the new Motorola Dext. I bring you all the latest tech news, and Otis checks out the iGame from LNX. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. First up, John's been out and about with another mobile phone, and this week it's the Motorola Dex. It's designed to integrate all of your social networking needs into one handset, but is it well implemented? Over to you, John. This is the Motorola Dext. It's a new phone using the Android operating system that, as I speak, is available exclusively on Orange. Now, it's not particularly trendy to look at. It looks rather like a dumpy version of Nokia's N97. It's quite thick in profile. It's a touchscreen on top, slides open to reveal a QWERTY keyboard underneath. But the trendiness, at least as Motorola would see it, is on the inside with their new Moto Blur software that's draped over the Android operating system and aims to actually combine together all your various social networks. When you first switch it on, you're invited to set up a Moto Blur account. And once you put in your details for that, you're then taken through to a screen which has various commonly used social networking applications on it, and you're invited to put in your login details for those as well. And what it does is take any new event that happens in that those applications and throws it into a sort of universal inbox. Though there are separate inboxes as well, if you wish. It also puts together any news in those networks into a happenings widget that can be placed on the home page. You go into that and you can flick through all these different happenings. Although I did find it wasn't exactly reliable in its updates and uh, actually rather erratic at times. Here's one from five minutes ago, right alongside one from seven hours ago. I don't think it should be like that. If you go into contacts, you also find it's actually got all your contact details from these various networks and amalgamated it all together, together with any information about the person, their picture, all that sort of thing, which is really rather good. I mean, here's Tom, director, cameraman, etc. He's there with all his uh, email details, phone numbers and so forth. And if he calls me, you actually get at the bottom of the screen Facebook or Twitter update of what he claims to be doing now, which in this case is correct. He is filming me. The QWERTY keyboard is quite an asset to your networking. It's positive and easy to use and there's a useful direction pad at the side. And if you don't fancy opening up the phone, the actual touchscreen keyboard is quite positive as well. Overall, in fact, it is a reasonably responsive touchscreen. It's not of the best, but uh, pretty good. What's not such an asset for your networking, though, is the camera. 5 megapixels with autofocus, pretty good in daylight, but uh, once it gets dark, there's no flash to illuminate things, so it won't be much good for your nighttime social engagements. And the video has got quite a disappointing QVGA resolution, so uh, that's not much good for uploading stuff to YouTube. There's pretty good web browsing with a supplied browser and five customizable home screens, which is pretty good. You get excellent GPS with orange maps thrown in, a three and a half millimeter headphone socket, remote wiping and online backup. Plus, of course, there's always the Android market, which I know is a bit of a work in progress, but you might well find something there you want. On the negative side, there's no radio. The call quality is actually rather poor. It's quite tinny and artificial sounding, obviously being a fairly sophisticated smartphone. The battery life's nothing special. You need to charge it every day. And it's also, strangely, very slippery to hold. You could find yourself dropping it. Overall, though, although it's not necessarily class leading, with all these lovely networking facilities, it's definitely a phone you can have fun with. Right, news time now, and first up, Freesat has recently announced that both the BBC iPlayer and ITV Player video on demand services will be available on its platform. And with the beta version of iPlayer starting on December 7th, it will hopefully only be a short amount of time before the service is available to the general public. So with all this talk of video on demand, it's made Sky reiterate that it does have plans to bring broadband video on demand to its Sky Plus HD boxes next year. And with the Sky Player already functional through the Xbox 360 and PCs, it's leaving other customers frustrated that they cannot access it through their HD boxes. But Sky claimed that the new service will use broadband capabilities from existing HD boxes and provide customers with additional choice alongside the current Sky Anytime VOD service. The arrival of the video on demand service on Sky Plus HD will be a key event for the broadcasters next year. So keep an eye on the news pages of our website for more information when it becomes available. 
Next, Sennheiser have recently demonstrated what they claim to be the best Bluetooth headsets ever. The Sennheiser Communications headset MM450 Travel brings you the trademark Sennheiser quality in a Bluetooth headset. It gives you stereo Bluetooth 2.1 and noise guard active noise reduction to cut out any unwanted sound and it even folds up for easy portability. The headset is charged via USB and it's got a built-in microphone so you can use it with your mobile phone. The unit does come in at a hefty £290, but if you're looking for a premium set of headphones that can double up as your Bluetooth headset, then these are definitely worth looking into. Now it's time for Otis to give us some inspiration for Christmas presents as he checks out the new iPod dock from LNX with its integrated games console. Christmas is coming, so of course thoughts are turning to what to get for members of the family. So we thought we'd get in a little ahead of the game and uh, take a look at one or two things. This is the iGame. It's a games console that you just plug and play straight into the back of your TV. But it's also an iPod dock, so you've got access to all your music and of course all your videos which will play directly through the television. You can choose to shuffle songs, you can take a look at the settings as well. So it's a pretty basic menu but still comprehensive enough for full access to your iPod. There are six games at the moment, but there are memory cards available so that you can purchase new games uh, and possibly download new games so you can increase uh, the number of which you have. Now, the games aren't great in terms of graphics or anything and you know grown-ups who are used to gaming uh, may get bored rather easily but there are some rather simple but fairly engaging games my favorite of which is darts now of course darts is a game that you can practice on your own but in order to really engage in competition you need to have an arch nemesis Dion! We got that out. Darts, dude. Darts? Yes. Bring it on. Right. So, uh, should we play at home or should we play in a pub? Pub. Pub. Okay. And the way you play it is obviously you put the, put the safety strap on, yeah? And then you just do a dart action. So you see the way the dart is moving yeah. horizontally across. When it gets to where you want, you just flick the wrist. Oh, Ooh. okay. That's quite good. There you go. So I've got a couple of darts and then you've got a couple of darts. Okay, right. It's a bullseye! Yes, treble ten! Oi! Oh, you still. That was heading for the bullseye, that! Oh, three there. When's it my go? Well, no, no, you get, I get about. I get a few darts first. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even <laughs> okay, right. So I've got 22 left. So obviously you've got to finish on a double because that's how you do it. So double 11. Oh. Okay, right. Now it's going to be your turn. Okay. okay. So use the dart moving horizontally along the. All right. Well, don't. I'm just giving it a whirl. Oh, all right. There's no practice. You. Right, this is okay. it. You're in. Oh, okay. Yeah. No yeah. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Check. No, it was, it was great. Now the game works using accelerometers in the handset, but there isn't a motion sensor that comes with it, so movements aren't quite as sensitive as those you would find on the Wii, for instance. But like I said earlier, for, for basic games such as this one, darts can be fairly engaging and will be especially good for young children. The iPod docking section of it, I think most people out there who own an iPod will have a dock of some kind, which is... Good for you. <laughs> Which is more than likely to be better than this setup. You got two darts left. Oh. All right. No, oh, not double. Oh, did I lose? But that was oh, a really good score. Triple eighty. You equaled me. <laughs> there will, of course, be a rematch. There has to be because I'm going to beat you. Uh, beat you. So you think. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, but make sure you tune into the main show this Monday at 8 on 5 when we'll be bringing you our Christmas special. There'll be ideas for stocking fillers, a buyer's guide and internet-enabled TVs. It's one not to miss. In the meantime, be sure to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages to keep up to date with all the latest goings on here at Gadget HQ. And make sure you catch next week's Web TV when we'll be bringing you the top 50 gadgets for Christmas. See you then.